Hey, what's up? I'm Ashley. Thank you for watching this video. And today we're going to be talking about the L word generation Q season three, episode six. And let's go ahead and get started. So we started off the episode with Shane having a big old orgy and she did not look happy about it. How you going to do that and not be happy about it? We didn't see no smiling, no nothing. And I was watching it just thinking, too bad we're not gonna keep this same energy because i knew in a few more minutes we was all gonna get tortured with this musical so alice walks through the door because it is alice's house and all she got to say is that's a lot of naked people on my velvet couch Ugh, velvet how you gonna clean that off you need a deep clean or something i don't know how you clean velvet i don't like velvet but her and Shane was going through the house with a little spray bottle. Like that's going to do something. Anyway, Alice ends up talking Shane into going on her work team building trip and tells her that she don't got to worry about nothing because Ivy won't be there. She got her a job in New York, which why do we even need to know that? Why do we get an update on Ivy, but not Danny's daddy? What he going through with the law? So anyway, they get to the team building place and right when they get off the bus, they all get sprayed in the face. Sophie! Needs to get sprayed about 19 more times though. Give me the bottle, lady. Because I'm going to keep spraying. I'm going to keep going. So this lady with these weird bangs says to them, what do you want the universe to show you? And then tells them to write down their intentions. Alice wrote down, will I ever find the one? Shane, why do I blow ish up? And Sophie wrote down, is Finley right for me? Ball that up. Throw it in the trash. Start over. Because... Your question should be, am I the right one for Finley? Why do I cheat on people and flip it back on them like it's their fault? That should be her question. Why do I want my cake and everybody else's cake too? So this lady with the weird bangs gives them this weird potion to drink. And that turns everything into a musical. And let me just say, all those chains standing up in a line like that. Like any mini money mo. And I don't want none of them. I will none of them. My life would be ruined. I would end up like Carmen, like Kiara, like Tess, like all the other randoms. I would be ruined. I'd be tempted, but I'd be ruined. Let's start with Alice, though, and what happened to her when she drank that potion. Her world turned into a whole game show called Name That Flaw, where she had to name out all the flaws of her exes and why they were undateable. When they popped Tom's picture up there, she said that he was too conventional and wanted to get married too soon. She said Taylor didn't like her enough. For that little Gen Zer, she just said the word Coachella. And when they put Nat up there, she said Gigi. And then the host was like, of course it's Gigi. The answer is always Gigi. Was that shade? So they switched things up and put Alice's picture up there and asked her why she thinks she undateable. What's her flaw? And I said, Dana. But she ended up saying, I push people away, and that ended up being the right answer. So, since she got all those answers right, she ended up winning, and her prize was she won her dream life, a whole bedroom set, and her dream partner. And when they said partner, I said, here come Dana. And it was Dana. She popped up like a ghost. And immediately, they started singing and dancing. I said, oh, God. Oh, God. I had to say it two times and they were singing about what their life is like together. About having cats and watching TV and laughing at Alice's bad jokes. And first of all, if it was never that bad decision to kill Dana, we wouldn't be having to look at this in a musical. If they really wanted to kill somebody, it could have been Tina. She's irrelevant without bet. And try to go back and forth with me about it if you want to. That's my serious voice. So anyway, they going back and forth singing and dancing. So then we get to this part where Alice tells Dana, I want to stay with you here forever. And Dana's like, you can't stay here. And I'm thinking, are we in heaven? Did we just die? Because what she's talking about, I want to stay here. And she's talking about, no, you can't stay here. Are we looking at stars? Are we in the sky? Oh, I'm so confused. But Alice says, I asked the universe to show me the one and they found you. And Dana says, so? So Alice is confused too, like I just was. And she was like, so how am I find the one? You supposed to be the one for me. Dana tells her the one is still out there for you. And Alice is like, do you know them? Dana said, of course I know. And Alice said, do they know you? And that's when Dana said, in a way. And as soon as she said that, I said, it's Tom. 
it's time. They about to have Alice out here living a straight life. And then that was it. Dana leaves and we see Alice looking inside of this box. That flower she was about to give Dana the day she died. And that book Tom helped her write. And she's now realizing that Dana was talking about Tom being the one for her. So she sends Tom a text talking about it's been a while. Are you around? And so we're about to see Tom. How y'all feel about that? But I was excited to see Dana back. Unfortunately, I have to see her back dead technically but it was nice to see alice and dana back together again we'll never see it again never so here we go with shane shane is a sailor in the 1940s and she was walking down the street in her musical and when she was walking down the street she saw a flyer with tests on it she was like oh who is this? She called everybody over. She said, hey guys, come on over and look at this picture with Tess on it. I'm going to go in there and shoot my shot. So Dana's existed in the 1940s because there go back there. There go back there. So she walk up in there. She finds Tess and guess what they start doing? Singing and dancing. First of all, take this steering wheel away from Shane because she don't know what to do with it. She got everybody falling over. Megan Thee Stallion. Don't you ever hand over the boat to Shane. So Shane and Tess was walking down the street and Shane is telling Tess how she's not like the rest of them. So she's starting off the relationship a lot. Right after that, these four women are walking down the street too. And they're like, there she is. Where do you think you're going, Shane? Tess is like, they found you. And Shane was like, they always do. Come on now. You'll be finding them too. So Shane starts running. She's like, I'll lose them. But you get the car and meet me around back. So these four women find Shane on top of this building because like Shane said, they always find her and they're pulling her, trying to hold her back away from Tess. Tess is saying, jump, just jump down a hundred feet. If you want to be with me, it's the only way we can be together forever, forever. And Shane's like, forever? And Tess is like, yeah, forever. So Shane ends up jumping off of the building and into the car with Tess so they can be together forever. And that was the end of Shane's magical music dream she wakes up and she's all like i have to find tess and she goes to tess's house and she starts telling tess that she's realized that she's been hanging on to this part of her because she doesn't know herself without it and that's why she's afraid to let that go and that she wants another chance and then after that is when shane could tell something was wrong with tess and that's when tess goes my mom died and that was the end of that so of course Tess's mom dying and Shane having this realization in this whole musical is going to bring them closer together and they're going to have a whole bunch of bar babies. How y'all feel about that? Let me know. So now we're moving on to Sophie. Finley and Sophie got into another fight because Finley wanted Sophie to take her to go look at this car that she was looking at on CarMax and Sophie's like, I can't take you to Reseda to go look at no car because I have to leave for this trip. And I can't even come for Sophie's neck this time because obviously she has somewhere she gotta be. Finley, sweetie, there's Ubers, there's Lyfts. But we get to Sophie's musical and it don't make no sense. It's stupid. I thought we was confused when I thought we died and went to heaven with Alice to go see Dana. But no, this little knockoff I Love Lucy episode, I don't know what we was doing with this. I don't know what they were trying to do with this. Another thing Sophie is, is delusional. Besides being a liar, a cheater, a manipulator, and someone who doesn't know what the word accountable means, definitely not the word sorry. She's delusional because what was this musical actually about? She was up in the musical acting like Finley be treating her the way she be treating Finley. In the musical, Finley's boss came over for dinner and her boss just had to be Micah, huh? Micah and Micah's born wife, Maribel. They just can't miss an episode, huh? They just can't miss an episode. They act like they bring in the entertainment. They gotta put them in every episode. But in the musical, Finley told Sophie to be quiet. Don't talk. Don't say nothing. Act like you got laryngitis. Dumb Sophie was like, Laryn what? And of course, you don't know what that means either because all you know is the word me and myself. But she told her this because her boss is serious or something like that. Don't make no sense. So Finley ends up getting mad at Sophie because Sophie wasn't acting right. Turns out this whole thing was 
being filmed they're actors and they have a whole studio audience out there so she's like stop cut and then that's when danny gets up guess she was the director or something danny starts rubbing on finley's shoulder talking about you got this babe as if they're in some kind of relationship or something and that's when finley twirls danny around and starts kissing her i'm like this is stupid so sophie is upset during this filming so she decides to get up and start singing and dancing about how it's all about me and about how she's no longer afraid what was you afraid of sophie gets home and it turns out that finley went and bought the car by herself and finley apologized to sophie and she told her she was just afraid to do it on her own and she told her that she was realizing that it's good that they spend some time apart she has so much stuff that she wants to do for herself and that it's hard to do it when they're always together and that they should start acting like separate people now and that by the end of this whole thing, they're going to turn out to be life coaches for other people. And that's when Sophie started scrunching up her face and Finley's like, what's wrong? Are you mad at me? And she's like, no, I can't do this anymore. I love you, but I'm not my full self when I'm with you. She said, I love you, but I need to be by myself right now. Well, if that's true, liar, how come I saw you in the preview for next week flirting with some other girl? I'm not mad at this breakup. It should have been happened. I'm just mad at the fact that Sophie is the one that broke up with Finley. Finley should have been the one breaking up with Sophie. And still in this whole conversation, Finley is the only one who apologized and said sorry. Sophie ain't not once said I'm sorry. She ain't said I apologize, nothing ever. But you know what? Good riddance. Finley don't need you. She about to thrive out here. She got herself a car. She about to go to school. She gonna do better than you. That's why you fell in the pool. And I can't wait to laugh at you next week because you fell in the pool. We did not need a musical in order for Sophie and Finley to break up. And the musical didn't even make no sense. I don't know what they was talking about. I don't know what Sophie was talking about. You know what else was stupid? This kiss between Shane and Alice because I know Alice didn't think Dana was talking about Shane. I just know she didn't. And that's it. I'm about to get out of here because what did we just watch? But y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode in the comments so we can talk about it. And if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.